Hi everyone, my name is Eti Schwartz. Um, I graduated from ECP in 2008 and I currently work as a trainee solicitor at Moorcroft's LLP, which is a law firm based just outside London. I currently specialize in technology law as well as commercial intellectual property, corporate and personal data protection law and I regularly advise uh, private companies as well as public sector organizations and various bodies on issues in these areas. And now I've been asked to record this short video and to talk about my journey after leaving ECP, which may inspire some of you. But more importantly, I would like to talk about the specifics of career in the legal field. So let's get straight into it. So after graduating from ECP in 2008, I spent a few years studying law at the University of Exeter followed by obtaining a master's degree in intellectual property law from Queen Mary University of London. With that, I later returned to Prague and joined the commercial department of the biggest law firm in the country, where I stayed just over two years. And since this was my first work experience in the legal field, I started learning uh, pretty much everything about the legal profession from ground zero. Um, this was a very valuable experience and taught me a lot of lessons, uh, some of which have shaped me into the sort of lawyer I have become. Also, um, and more importantly, uh, I experienced what it's really like to work uh, in a big corporate law firm with all it has to offer, including the positives as well as the negatives. Um, after a few years working in Prague, mostly with local clients and local matters, I was starting to miss the international element or the international context, which I've gotten so much used to ever since I started studying at ECP. So, I applied and was offered a place to participate in the traineeship program of the European Commission in Brussels, where I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to work with the directorate focusing on technology and the related policy areas. And more specifically, I was a member of the Internet of Things unit. And at that time, the focus of my work was essentially looking into liability for the acts or omissions of connected devices. And I was, I was tasked to consider whether such acts and omissions should be the responsibility of the manufacturer of such connected devices or their owner, or whether in fact such devices should have a legal responsibility of their own um, in a similar way as, for example, companies do nowadays. Now, as you can imagine, in the age where self-driving cars and smart home appliances are starting to play an ever-increasing role in our daily lives, these are some pressing issues for policymakers to resolve and in this way, working with the European Commission in Brussels in this very field was super interesting. But also it was interesting from the perspective that I got to see the behind the scenes of such a huge institution and also other Brussels-based institutions. And um, I also got to work with plenty of international experts, uh, some of which I have in fact uh, remained friends until this very day. Whilst in Brussels, I was also lucky enough to meet my next employer, which was a specialized law firm based in Amsterdam. And in fact, this firm works closely with the European Commission. So I, in fact, was able to join projects uh, which I had already been relatively familiar with from my previous work. And in addition, and in addition to that, um, I also started expand, expanding my horizons by learning about personal data protection law. And I, st I also started advising clients on this very topic. Now, working in law is as much about knowing what the applicable law is, as it is about uh, close communication and building long lasting relationships with your clients. And although I mostly enjoyed the work I did in Amsterdam and in Prague, I was, in fact the, I was in fact never the client's point of contact with the firm, which was mainly because I was, I was not a qualified legal practitioner 
authorized to give legal advice. So what I did, I was mostly tasked by uh, I was mostly tasked with um, with preparing drafts for my supervisors, who would then com who would then communicate them to the clients themselves. And in fact, this was exactly what I was missing and what I wanted to achieve next. So it soon became obvious to me that to achieve this, I would need to essentially become qualified in some jurisdiction. In other words, given my background, I would need to become a Czech advocate or the English solicitor. And it didn't really require that much thinking to pick the second option. So I moved back to England. I passed the legal practice course or the LPC in 2019, which is essentially a compulsory vocational course that you need to um, essentially pass if you want to become a solicitor and during which you have to pass exams of similar significance to the Czech Advokátní zkoušky. That's in case you're taking the Czech route for a two qualification. And then I joined my current employer in 2020. Um, just a side note on the LPC, uh, the route to qualification in England and Wales is currently changing. So for those of you who are considering joining this profession, you will most likely be doing so with the new solicit solicitors qualifying examination or the SQE. That's just a heads up if you've already started doing your research. So that's about it in terms of my career path so far. The other topic I would like to talk to you about today is the career in the legal sector itself, its specifics and things that you should know already at this stage. I think the most important thing you should be aware of, and in all honesty, what I did not see an issue whilst at ECP myself, is that law is very territorial. In other words, the law applicable in the Czech Republic is very different from the law applicable in England and Wales, and as a matter of fact, even within the UK, there are three different jurisdictions, namely the English law, Scots law and Northern Irish law. Having said that, if you want to practice law, then where you obtain your qualifying law degree will very likely determine where you will be able to qualify. So, if you see yourself working as a solicitor in England in 10 years, then sure, yes please, go ahead and apply to law in England. If, however, when you reach your 30s, you would much rather live and have a career in law in the Czech Republic, then I would recommend you get a Czech law degree instead. I know it's very tempting to apply to universities elsewhere, and in all fairness, both the ECP and the IB program give you a superb foundation or even a head start for this, but when it comes to law, things can get a bit tricky and challenging when you want to move around. So if you want to apply to study law, you should definitely consider territoriality already at this stage. Now, when it comes to applying to law in general, I would strongly recommend focusing on one specific legal field or finding your edge in one particular area. And this doesn't have to be only, you know, in the classical fields such as criminal law or employment law or constitutional law, you might as well find your edge in fairly specific and narrow fields such as esports law or indeed tech law or environmental law. I mean, chances are that uh, you have to study all the compulsory modules whilst you're at university anyway. But having a specific interest already at this stage will make your university application and later also job applications much more fun, fun to write and also to read and it, this, will make, this will in fact make them stand out. In addition, having this focus will also help you, um, help you work towards your career goals much more efficiently and it will also help you with finding topics for your dissertations as well as other academic papers later on. My final recommendation is that you look out for and are open to new opportunities. 
Um, while it makes a lot of sense to make up your mind about your career goals and systematically work towards them, I think that you should try different things at university and also during the first couple of years of your career. Uh, doing so will undoubtedly give you a range of new experiences, it will allow you to or it will give you an opportunity to meet new people, um, you know, build up your build up your social network, and it will also possibly provide you with a chance to see your profession from different angles. So, for example, if you know you want to become a legal practitioner in a specific field, I would think that it makes a lot of sense to work in that specific field with private law firms, yes, but I would recommend you also try working with policymakers, various government institutions, possibly also the courts, or with not-for-profit not, not organizations in that specific field. Now, with such experience, you will later be able to make an informed decision as to where, how, and with whom you want to work. So, with that, I would like to conclude my talk and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please do reach out to me. You can generally message me on LinkedIn. I wish you all all the best and I'm confident that you'll do really well in your final couple of years at ECP because I honestly believe that you have a great team of teachers and mentors looking after you at ECP. So I would really encourage you to make the most of their experience and career advice they can share with you. Thanks again and all the best.